With Wild Hearts now released, you may be wanting to head out into the world to take down those giant nature-infused kimono, to progress through the main story, or just to explore and build out in the open world. So when Electronic Arts asked to sponsor a video, we figured putting together all of the beginner's tips, advice, and all of that good stuff that we wish we knew sooner before playing would hopefully be a great help to you guys. So let us know down in the comments if you found any useful tips or tricks while playing so we can all learn together as a community. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to click like to show support and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next guide from us. Let's start it off by talking about the open world Karakuri buildings, also known as Dragon Karakuri. Think of these like useful utility buildings that will be persistent on your map. They serve a variety of purposes, and here we will recap the really important ones for you as a beginner. First, you need to know that in order to build any Dragon Karakuri, you'll need to use some of your Dragon Pit resources. Each Dragon Karakuri you try to build will require and consume the corresponding icon of resource within the Dragon Pit capacity. For instance, building a campfire has the fire icon, which will consume some of the bar that also has the fire icon. So to expand this resource, you will need to go around the map and unlock dragon pits that will increase the capacity of these bars. Once you have unlocked a dragon pit, you can actually further upgrade them, which can even be done via the map menu and will require crystals specific to that map. The best place to get these crystals is in these little glowing mounds that will spawn all over the area, so keep an eye out for these and gather them when you see them. Some buildings will be unlocked as you progress in the game, but for now, here are some of the more important ones that you want to know about early. The hunting towers act as a radar system, which will scan for kimonos in a radius around it. So setting these up all over the map will make hunting so much easier. Additionally, they will show you campsites that you can build on, which brings us to our next building, the hunter's tent. This acts as a fast travel and spawn point, so they're super useful. They cost a lot of resources to build out in the map, but they're very cheap on preset campsites. So make sure to find them with a hunting tower and place a tent once you're there. Within a campsite, there'll also be ancient trees. These are in other locations of the map too, but you can go up to them and construct a well on them. Using the well will fully heal you and refresh 10 of your healing waters, which are like your potions. The training bear is also fantastic for any beginner as you can practice your weapon on them and enabling attack tutorials will teach you the very basics of your weapon. The forge can be placed anywhere and will let you craft new weapons, armor, and change your basic karakuri, but we'll get into that later. The flying vines are like zip lines and they're fantastic for getting around the map very quickly. While the roller is a super fun way to ride around the map faster than running, and well, it looks pretty cool too. Next, you'll benefit from understanding the map. Within the map menu, you can see different areas that you can travel to, and more areas will unlock as you progress in the game. You can fast travel to the tent icon to freely explore that target's area, or you can select a target-specific monster to travel to that map and hunt that specific monster down. Once you have unlocked assignments, which are like side quests, they will appear here too. And finally, on the map, you also have a chapter select. Some items, as well as different versions of kimono, are specific to set chapters, so you may need to go back to get something you need later on. Next, let's go over the weapons. Within the game, there are eight weapons in total, but you'll only start with five and you'll unlock the remaining three from chapter two. You can choose from the Karakuri Katana, which is a medium weight short ranged balance weapon with powerful arcing slash attacks and an awesome unleashed mode for further range and power. Next is the Nadachi, a close ranged heavy weapon with powerful but slower and measured attacks. It's all about managing your stamina while building up charge. Then the bow is your first ranged attack option with great maneuverability. It's about peppering your target with arrows and then exploding them for big damage. The Bladed Wagasa is your more defensive option with access to a parry and powerful rapid attacks. The Maul is the heaviest weapon, but also has extreme power. It's all about timing your combos to extend the handle to deal massive damage. Then after chapter two, you'll unlock the next three weapons. The Claw Blade, which is very lightweight and focuses on aerial combos of flashy and rapid attacks. The Karakuri Staff, a medium weight weapon with five different forms that you morph between, building up to hitting with the giant sword form for big damage. And finally, the second ranged option is the cannon, which is a heavy, long-ranged weapon, all about managing your gauges and building up to using its powerful laser beam finisher. If you're a beginner, we recommend starting out with the Karakuri Katana or the Nadachi. These are easy to get to grips with as a starter due to their more simple to learn but hard to master playstyle. But of course, use what's most appealing to you and try something out if you want to. Next, you'll want to understand the gear system. At any forge, you can create new armor and weapons. These will come with varying stats and skills that 
boost your character, but they will require materials. Your starting gear is very bad and has really low defense, so you will want to upgrade this as soon as possible. And this is where this cyclopedia will be your best friend. From here you can see the parts which come from each kimono, including certain ones that require specific areas of the kimono to be broken. You can also tab over to the small creatures page and see the materials that these give you, because you will need items off of the small creatures as well. You're going to get different items by slaying and petting these small creatures, so make sure you go in knowing exactly what you need. Finally is the creature page, which is very useful because you will once again need materials from these creatures as well later on, so make sure to capture them out on the map and then place down cages or pens so they will give you materials after time. You also have talismans which will give you more skills and buffs to your character, so make sure to use a forge to access the equipment menu and equip your talismans that you get by completing hunts. The general gameplay loop is to hunt creatures to get parts, to then use those parts to make more powerful gear, to then hunt more powerful creatures to get stronger parts that then make more powerful gear, and so on. Next let's catch you up to speed on Monato, which is your main hub area. You can actually build things here, such as flying vines to get around, but on the map itself, you also have a lot of fast travel points, which are super useful. If you don't like the time of day you're hunting or exploring in, you can also change it in your character's home here in Monato too. Another useful system to know about is the Guild of Fishermen jobs. These are like bounties, and each task you select and complete will reward you with seals. The more seals you collect, the more items you will get, and it's a great way to get gold because you get a bunch of it at the end too. And once you completed all of them, it will reset to give you more items. The shop is also great to know about, and the buy page will cycle its items after each hunt. You can also sell stuff here too, and we recommend selling the coin icon items because they're meant to be sold and often yield high amounts of gold. Later on here in Monato, you can actually rebuild buildings, which will cost a lot of gold, but will expand your inventory slots. Next, let's talk about combat tips. Make sure to collect your Zukumo. These function as your solo play companions and are very helpful to distract, attack and give you threads mid-combat. But by collecting additional ones of these around the map and using the old cogs to upgrade your Zukumo, you will increase your maximum Karakuri threads which is very useful. Within the game you can use these threads to create basic Karakuri and there are four starter ones and two additional ones that you unlock later. The crate lets you stack them together and jump off of them for a powerful attack that varies depending on your weapon and they can be used for traversal to climb walls as well. The spring will let you bounce forward and deal a special attack that depends on your weapon. The torch gives your weapon a fire buff and that can also be used to clear vines blocking paths. The glider lets you glide around for traversal, but also can be used for a special weapon attack too. The two additional ones that you unlock later include the stake, which can be lodged into walls for easier traversal, or to launch you into a kimono with a special attack follow-up. The celestial anchor lets you propel yourself around and jump even higher into the air, great for traversal, but also performs a special attack based on your weapon. When in combat, if you break a monster part, you might reveal a glowing green spot. You can then jump onto the monster and use your hunter's arm to extract their Karakuri thread from this glowing spot. This lets you build even more things in battle, and it will also get you better talismans as a reward at the end of a hunt. Before fighting something though, we recommend eating food, and you should focus on the ones that give you health and defense bonuses while you're getting to grips with the game. When getting hit by a kimono, make sure to press the dodge button to do a dodge roll to recover even faster. And finally, while running, you can also use the dodge button to do a slide. This can be somewhat spammed if you have enough stamina, and it will get you around a little bit faster. Next you need to know about the fusion karakuri and inspiration. Certain kimono will let your hunter get inspired. This will make a quick mini game quick time event happen. Succeeding in this will permanently learn that fusion karakuri to your hunter. You can build these anytime after that and some of them are super useful in combat, but they are also somewhat missable if you don't have the correct basic karakuri equipped when hunting those monsters for the first time. You can always go back and fight them with the correct karakuri later on and you'll be able to see which basic karakuri are needed to unlock these if you miss them in the karakuri tree. We recommend making sure to not miss out on the chain trap and harpoon because these are super powerful and helpful. The chain trap will need crates and stakes while the harpoon will need springs and stakes. Also keep in mind that the very first one you unlock, the bulwark, is very good even though it's an early game unlock. This will still be powerful mid to late game and it can be upgraded in the karakuri tree so let's talk about the karakuri tree. Here you can buy upgrades which need kimono orbs. You'll get these as a reward after a hunt, but also mid combat by breaking parts. For early upgrades, we recommend focusing on the bulwark upgrades to make it even stronger, the hunting tower upgrades to increase your scanning range, and the water tota upgrades so you can carry more maximum healing waters. Outside of this, try experimenting with the other dragon karakuri and see what works for you. When it comes to co-op though, you'll need to know that campfires are used to create multiplayer lobbies, so your friends can then join on you and you can invite them in the communication 
options menu. Main story progress will be shared with your friends in your world. However, buildings, side assignments, and map progression of things like the Dragon Pits are not shared, so do be aware of that. They will have to go and do that in their own individual world. Did we miss anything out, or do you know any other tips? Make sure to tell us in the comments down below. And if you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, make sure to click like down below to show support to us because it really does help. And subscribe so you don't miss out on the next guide from us here on the channel. And the two videos on screen now we think you'll really like if you did enjoy this one. Of course you don't have to if you don't want to, but if you enjoyed this video you're probably going to like these ones too. And then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.